The Winchester lever gun is one of the most famous American firearms ever. So today we're going to take a look at all the iterations on it and the fascinating history behind this firearm. And while I don't have an example of each individual model, I do have one example of each of the various actions that you see in all of the old Winchesters outside of the model 1895, which is kind of a different beast in its own little separate thing. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the history and development from each step, and then show you the action that was in those various models. Now, something that makes the history of the Winchester so interesting is that it didn't even really start off with the Winchester lever gun. It predates that by a good bit. And this story involves a number of different firearms and involves a number of names. Now the story here goes a lot further back than what most of you are thinking. It goes back to 1848. And what we're looking at in 1848 is going to be the Volition Repeating Rifle and the Volition Repeating Pistol. This is the first thing that would let you fire multiple rounds out of a tube magazine. Had an action in there with some toggle links and a lifter block. Now what it was using at the time was a little bit different type of ammunition. What Hunt had done with his design was come up with rocket ball ammunition. You think of rocket ball as a bullet that was hollowed out in the back. And in that hollow little area in the back, you could put in some powder, stick a cap over it, and you had a self-contained cartridge. The downside to it is that this ended up kind of making very weak, anemic rounds. They didn't have a lot of weight to them. There wasn't a lot of room to put a lot of powder in them. So now this goes through a good bit of steps here with some other people getting an improved design of it and patenting that. What you ended up with at one point was a company with the major investors in it being Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson. Yes, Smith and Wesson. Now they briefly had this all together as the Smith and Wesson company, but ended up renaming it Volcanic repeating arms and they were in there for a bit working with that and got another investor in there this guy named oliver winchester he goes through some more things and eventually smith and wesson end up leaving the company and getting out of that and then you ended up with someone else benjamin tyler henry who got in there and really redesigned this thing into the first successful iteration with the original Henry rifle. And so that Henry rifle was basically taking that old volition or volcanic rifle and changing it to where it could take regular brass cartridges in there like we're used to seeing. Now these cartridges were 44 rimfire, known as 44 Henry rimfire. There was a modification made to the lifter block to be able to allow it to act as the ejector. And they put an extractor on the bolt to help pull the cartridges out. And then you had a successful rifle. And this thing started showing up right around in the middle of the Civil War. There was a famous Confederate general who proclaimed that the Henry rifle was that damn Yankee rifle that you can load on Sunday and shoot all week. They had put the whole company under New Haven repeating arms and it was going pretty well until Henry and Winchester ended up having a falling out. Um, and long story short, since the original patent for the Henry rifle was in Oliver Winchester's name and not in Henry's name, Winchester ended up with the rights to that. So he took the rights that he had for that Henry Rifle started up another company, Winchester Repeating Arms, and started making the Henry Rifle there. Eventually ended up making an improved version of the Henry, which was originally called the Improved Henry Rifle, and later just the Winchester Rifle. And what this really all focused around was one thing on it that changed. And by changing this one thing, you end up having a number of other things that could be done. And that was changing how the rounds loaded into it. On the original Henry, 
there was this weird thing and you had a tab on the bottom of the magazine that you had to push forward push that all the way up to where you could then turn that over to the side and drop a bunch of rounds down the magazine then reverse that process turn it back and let the follower go back in there so you had to load it from the end there because of that follower tab you couldn't have any wooden handguard under the barrel and they started noticing that as a lot of rounds went through these things especially with that black powder that it would start getting hot now both of those were able to be fixed by king's loading gate it was just a simple gate that could go right up here on the receiver and all you had to load it from that side so then you didn't have the loading from the front you didn't have the weird follower so you could stick a handguard on it there and so that went really really well and was a great improvement for it with that um, 1866 model the next big change came in 1873 with the model 1873 now the big change there ended up being changing what the receiver was made out of instead of that golden brass gun metal ended up going with an iron frame on there which was a lot more strong they ended up also changing the way that the access panels on the side of it instead of ones to slide up and down from the sides you had some that just laid in and screwed it and they started introducing a number of other cartridges particularly a number of center fire cartridges and this is where the 4440 cartridge comes from which was a very popular cartridge from the time and so while we're talking about the action here in this 1873 let me go ahead and show that to you here now this one is a model 1873 this is actually an antique 1873 this one being produced in 1883 that as the lever goes down you'll have the bolt will kick out the back here push down the hammer it will also you notice this piece here pop in and out the elevator block there as you see as i bring that back right here it just kind of stops right there if you push it rest of the way if you watch this when i push it that will pop down there and then kind of the same thing this will go down most of the way and then that last little bit there pops it and you can see that go down to there the lever gets right to here it's just about at the end of its travel but as soon as we push that that will pop up there that will do two things that'll bring a new round out of the magazine there and get it into there if there was an empty one there that would also pop that out of out of there and that's how it would eject it the extractors on the bolt and that works as the ejector okay so we're going to actually open this guy up here to show you what's going on with the toggles because you really can't see any of it okay and here's our nice toggles right there and you'll see that as we move this here the toggles move all of that around there's also a bar located right down in there that goes into this lifter block there and we'll get to about here where the toggles will hit that bar and you'll see that bar right there pop up that bar goes inside of that lifter block and that's what pops the lifter block into place there and going down to here it's just about there once again it hits the lifter block and you'll see that go down i'll try to hold it up here to give you a real good look at this thing so you can see what's happening there the bottom toggles fell out but they they do the same thing as the ones on that side so that's basically what's going on in there now while these were popular the one big downside to them is that these things were using what were essentially pistol cartridges and full-size rifle cartridges just couldn't be in these things they were wanting to put like 45 70s in these and you just can't do that because that toggle link just can't handle it the only way that you can make that toggle link stronger is just to scale it up now they did give one go at trying to scale it up and that was with the model 1876 they were wanting to get 4570 in there and they couldn't quite get it now after the 1876 winchester kept making model 73s and 76s well another person another name that you've probably heard of 
comes on to the scene, and that is John Moses Browning. What got him on the radar with Winchester was a design for a single shot rifle. They had seen that out somewhere, they really liked it. And while they were talking to him about that, about getting the rights to that, he started talking to them about some things that he was doing on trying to rework the lever guns. And what Browning came up with was a completely different design. This thing did not work on those toggle links. They go all the way back to that old Volition rifle. This has two giant locking bars down the side. Those locking bars that go through the sides of the bolt and through part of the receiver really lock it up there and make it able to hold much, much more. And so with that, we ended up with the Model 1886. And this, you could put a lot through this thing. 4570 went in there easily. That was not a problem. They ended up having a 4590 cartridge that they made. Now Browning did design one other variation of this for Winchester and that was the model 1892. Winchester approached Browning and asked him if they could make a scaled down version of the 1886. They wanted to have that same action available for all the pistol cartridges and basically transition out the 1873 into this new design. And they came to him on that and asked him if he could have it available in two months. Browning told them that he would have it done in one month or it would be free. Two weeks later, he delivered the design for the Model 1892. And to take a look at that action, we're going to get a closer look at this reproduction 1892 here. So what we have here is a reproduction of the Winchester 1892 made by Rossi. It is pretty much identical in function to the 1892, aside from this weird little safety right here that was not there on the original 1892. So, you know, don't let that weird you out. There are some differences in there as to how it goes. You'll see when we pop this open that we have these bars right here come out. Now these bars here will come up right here. You'll see the bolt come forward and right here in this last little bit where you would normally have the lifter block pop in and out of place on the previous versions. When you get to this last little hitch here, those locking blocks go into place right there. You can see those come in and out. Now inside here, the lifter is very different. You'll see when it gets to there, that there's a lifter right here that will pop up. And that's more of just kind of like a little elevator ramp there instead of a block like what we had previously. And you can see that as this goes down here, it's just pulling these down here. You got the cut here in the bolt for those bars to go up into. And it all works that way. Browning started working on another design. This is going to be something that works a little bit different from the um, 86 and the 92. And that's something that ended up being the 1894. It has one big locking bar that goes up behind the entire bolt. And this was an even stronger rifle design than the um, 86 and the 92. Now this ended up being kind of a fortunate thing for Winchester that they ended up making this design because there was something that ended up happening a little bit after this rifle came out. And that was the French coming out with the LaBelle rifle. Now the LaBelle rifle was a bolt action military rifle in and of itself. It was not really considered to be a particularly good rifle, but there was one thing, one thing that the LaBelle had going for it. And that was smokeless powder. And this was just a complete game changer. And of course it didn't take long for smokeless powder to get out on the civilian market. The rifle that Winchester had available to put smokeless powder in was the 1894. And this is where you get that 3030 cartridge, which is probably the most famous 
lever action cartridge ever. The 1894s end up being the best selling of all of the Winchester rifles. But once you reach this design here, there really wasn't much of a way to improve it a whole lot more. It's just a bunch of little tiny things in there to change. Nothing major on it anymore. We'll take a look at it here so that you can see how the action looks on this. Okay, so this 1894 here is a Winchester 1894, but not as early a production um, as some of the others. This is like a 1850s production. As you see this goes down, you'll see that there's a whole lot coming out here that in fact this whole piece right here will pop out as it's going there. You'll see another piece in the middle there that will come and go with that. And this piece right back here, which is the main block, which will come up right there. You'll see the uh, notches in the receiver right there. And just the one solid block in the back pops out there. As far as the elevator on the inside, it works more or less the same. The lever will go down. We hit this spot right here to where it's not quite all the way back. And at that point, the elevator pops up there, which kicks that out. This will bring it forward. And right here, it's just about locked, but you push it rest of the way and that block goes up there. There's a lot more going on with it down here and that does help reinforce a lot of it. And so the last one to talk about here is the model 1895, which I do not have an example of here. And the 1895 was an attempt to get a military contract for Winchester lever guns. Quite a bit of a different action going on with it from all these others. It had a box magazine on it instead of the tube magazine that all of the others had had. And it ended up doing all right for Winchester. There were not ever a whole lot of military um, contracts for it. The largest contract that they actually got for it was in World War I for Russia that they were needing firearms so bad that they were willing to buy any type of firearm. And when Winchester told them that they could make 1895s, um, chambered in the cartridge that they were putting in their Mosins, they decided that that was, yeah, we're going with these things. They never really caught on. Military just really liked those bolt actions. There's some of them that ended up being made for civilians. Um, you'll see a number of them chambered in 30-06. 1894 just stayed way more popular. And so that's a quick look at the evolution of the Winchester lever gun here and hopefully you learned a little bit about it. Well, if you found this video useful be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like. You can go down into the comment section and leave any thoughts you have down there. And if you're interested you can also subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification to make sure that you catch all the videos that I post so you don't miss anything. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G and we'll see you next time.